I know I'm like super far away while filming this. I'm probably out of focus. I'm sorry. I can't make this work any other way. Um, but today I wanted to film my bookshelf tour. I know I look like shit because honestly I hear that filming these are very very difficult. Well I've heard that they're very difficult. They might not be. But I couldn't be bothered to put on anything other than my big sweater because it is super cold in my house right now. But I really wanted to film this video for you, so please excuse my demeanor. You won't see much of my face in this though, so that's always good. But let's go ahead and get started because I feel like this is going to take a really long time and I have to let you know I have seen videos where people pull out every single book that they have and show you every single book. I will not be doing that in this video because I do have quite a few books. It would take me- this video would be two hours long. Um, and I have so much on my shelves, as you can see, I have like knickknacks and things that I'm not going to be pulling those off, but I'll kind of be going over a few of the key books on each shelf and also the key items on each shelf as well, things that I really, really love. But let's go ahead and just get started because I don't want to be here for like seven hours. Alright, so starting off, right off the bat, I'm going to do the top of the two bookshelves, the bookshelves to the left that you see when I film. Up here I have books that I have read this month, that is this pile books that I need to read. Um, I'm but I was buddy reading this one with a friend, haven't finished it, and still trying to get through this one. This one I am buddy reading with a friend, and this one is my Hypernaut book, obviously. Um, I have my Owl Crate, my Wicked Fable, and my Fairy Loot boxes. I don't know why I keep those. <clears throat> Probably because they were a lot of money, and I feel like I spent a lot of money on them, so I should keep the boxes. Uh, and then I have my Fire Breathing Bitch Queen sign, which you guys have seen. It is an Etsy poster, as well as my sleeping mask that I got from an out crate? Yeah, this is my out crate one, so I'm just gonna set that right there. And then I have so many books, so little time. My picture, the reason why that one is up there is because the corner on it is actually broken. So that is the top of these two bookshelves. And then the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do the bookshelf here and the bookshelf there and then move, so. Alright, so first bookshelf we have is obviously my Throne of Glass section. Um, I really, really love this because, I don't know, I really love Kale, so I have a Kale candle and then obviously my Tower of Dawn. That is the book that I'm going to show you from this section because we are all very familiar with this entire series. I have a couple of Court of Candles candles, if you guys are not familiar with them, and then a Fairy Loot picture back there. I also have this little red bird that I have had for forever. I have actually, I got really mad when I threw it against the wall and it survived, so it is my favorite little bird. It is a very resilient bird. And then I also have... This right here, which is Faces and Names, it is a restaurant bar in New York City that I went to with my two best friends when we were at BookCon last year, so it is very nostalgic. But that is that shelf. That is just my Sarah J Moss shrine, if you will. And then moving on down, we have my Lee Bardugo shelf. I did not like these two series. You guys have seen me speak about, well, these two books, you guys have seen me speak about them before, um, but I obviously keep them because they have memories for me. I just could not have a completely Bardugo shelf and not have them. I have my Darkling Candle from A Court of Candles, and then I have my Darkling Candle from Bookish Dragon Co., Bookish Dragon Candle Co. You guys have seen the unboxing of those candles. You will know I'm obsessed. Of course, I have some pumpkins because pumpkins. And then I have obviously my Grisha Trilogy, my Wonder Woman Warbringer. Um, I do not have Language of Thorns here because I read that this month and I have to keep that in a separate place so I remember to do a wrap up for them. I also have in the Wick of Time a candle for Ketterdam for them. I'm sad that I own that candle because obviously I fucking hate the series. And then I obviously have some spoopy things as well as a card here that I got at the Lee Bardugo signing at BookCon. I am obsessed with this card. It's so fucking cute. Um, some of the characters that I actually like from the book, so I do keep those as well. But yeah, that is my Lee Bardugo shelf in a fucking nutshell. And then moving down from there, <clears throat> I have my Neil Gaiman shelf, which you can tell which ones are my most favorites. I own two copies of Neverwhere. I did buy the special edition for that. Um, I also have like Norse mythology right here, On in the Frost Rants and Sleeper in the Spindle. These are beautiful because they are like, they're not comics, they're definitely like stories, but they have like a lot of really pretty drawings in them and I am obsessed. Give me one second to show you. <clears throat> so yeah, they have a bunch of different drawings in them and I just, I fucking love these books. Although this one is kind of awful because it, it breaks because of the cover. It's very, very fragile. And then obviously I have my Coraline. I am obsessed with Coraline, both the movie, the book. It is very nostalgic for me. So I do have a Bell & Co candle here um, that I absolutely adore. If you guys are a fan of fruity scents and you want like a candle for Coraline, I would go with this. It smells like blueberry muffins and rain and it is perfect. But that is my Neil Gaiman shelf. I am a huge fan of his and I think that recently I've had a lot of hit or, like misses with him. I 
DNF's Trigger Warning, which is a full novel that he wrote just a bunch of short stories in, and then I DNF'd Unnatural Creatures because this is a mixed bag. This is a bunch of short stories written by a bunch of different authors, and I wasn't really a fan of a lot of the stories, so I did DNF that as well, but overall I pretty much love every single thing that Neil Gaiman does. <laughs> And then down here we have my science fiction section. A um, couple of these are not actually science fiction. I don't believe that the Kinslayer Chronicles are science fiction, but I needed to keep these down here because Jay Kristoff. Obviously the books that I really, really like from this section would be Want by Cindy Pond and then also Gemina. I have a little Funko from Star Wars. I have a bunch of little Star Wars um, knickknacks as well. And then behind Want, I also have a Darth Vader holding a kitty cat that my friend got me for Christmas. I am obsessed. And then behind Want, I also have a Mogul Library candle for Aiden, but this is probably my most aesthetically pleasing shelf to me, just because everything is kind of cohesive. It sort of has the same color scheme going on. Um, but yeah, I really, really like this shelf because I really, I didn't used to read science fiction and now I'm really, really liking it. So I do love this shelf a lot. And this is kind of a hard shelf to show you. I'm sorry that it's at an, at an odd angle, but there was no way to, I'm using my tripod and there was no way to kind of prop up my camera in a good way, but I'll kind of go over this shelf with you. This is a bunch of random books. Some of these are standalone, some of these I'm missing the other books in the series because I lent them to friends, which I never ever do anymore. Um, but first I have my old camera. I've had this camera since high school. My mama got it for me. And obviously I keep that because it's pretty nostalgic. I have the Philip Pullman books here. I have some Stephen Lawhead. I have Gillian Flynn's books, Gillian Flynn, um, Moth and Spark, which I really liked, Baron the Nightingale, Station Eleven. Station Eleven is probably my favorite book on this shelf. It's definitely a very underrated book. Um, I've heard some people talk about it, but it's an amazing book. You should definitely read it. Um, and then I obviously have Sandcastle Empire, uh, Thick as Thieves, funny story about this, I actually got this at BookCon. Um, my friend that I was with got it signed for me by the author, and then I found out that this is like a five part series and I have like the fifth book, so I need to buy the rest of them. I have a Starcross Queen, and then of course I have Weave World, which you guys have heard me speak about before, I love Weave World, and then I have Catacomb by Madeline Rowe, which I'm missing the rest of the series. These are the ones that I let a friend borrow, <coughs> Daughter of the Burning City, which you guys have seen, I hauled in like a fairy loot, I'll create, I don't remember, and then give me the child by Neil McGrath, which is a um, art copy that I got at BookCon. So that is this shelf, it's pretty simple, like I said, the, towards the end, towards the bottom of the shelves we just get a bunch of really, really random shit, but I still wanted to show you guys because I think it's important. So this shelf here is obviously my Akatar shelf. I'm gonna preface this with, please do not judge me. I am Sarah J. Moss trash. I cannot lie. Uh, the proof is clearly on my bookshelves, but I have the entire series here. I have an Amarantha candle from Bookish Dragon Candle Company, which you guys, like I said before, have seen me haul, so I'll stop saying that, but you should definitely watch that video if you haven't. And then I have every single Wicked Fable candle that I could find that has anything to do with the Akatar series. I have all of the courts, I have the inner circle, I have like night court, dawn court, day court, um, I have a resan candle from a court of candles. Lucian from A Court of Candles and then Court of Dreams, as well as Considerable Wingspan, which is hilarious to me. Um, I don't know, I just I thought it was super funny when I bought it. And then the Winter Court candle, because I am from the Winter Court. And then obviously on the print there in the back, you see it says to the stars who listen and the dreams that are answered. Uh, everyone and their fucking mom knows that or has that or, you know, something. Everybody knows that quote, so I'm not going to show you that, but I also got that print off of Etsy as well. So this is my Akatar shelf, and I'm fucking obsessed with it. <laughs> now coming down to this shelf, first thing you're going to notice is that plant. It is a fake plant. It's not squished, I promise. Um, but this is my, as right now, part V.E. Schwab, part science-y section. I have a little Gudetama Funko here. I love Gudetama. I have Neil deGrasse Tyson books. I have Sleeping Gods, sorry, Waking Gods and Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Neuville, if you guys know. Um, I fucking love this series. This was a discovery uh, that Coffee Chatter was actually talking about. She hauled uh, Sleeping Giants one time in a video and I fell in love with it. I have some Bill Nye books and then more Neil deGrasse Tyson. Because I am a cat mom, I do have obviously the All You Need Is Love and a Cat as well. And then I have more Bookish Dragon Candle Company candles here. These are all of the Londons as well as the Dane twins from this series here, which is obviously Shades of Magic. Um, I just ordered the special edition version of that and I can't wait to get that at the end of the month. And then I have an Astrovars. Like it was a mirror, but I dropped it so many times that it's not a mirror anymore. It's just metal, <laughs> but I keep it anyway because it's beautiful. 
And then obviously I had this Savage Song and Vicious as well as we got a tea towel in an owl crate one time and I just keep it up here because, you know, pirates and I love pirates and obviously there's some pirate themes in that. So that is my half V Schwab half science section that makes zero sense. Like I could probably consolidate these into my science section, but I won't. But yeah, that is that shelf. And then moving down, we obviously have my Harry Potter shelf. You can't really see these, but this is a Dementor. Um, not like Funko, it's, I forget who it's made by, but it's like a really descriptive Dementor. And then obviously I have Nagini back there, which you can kind of see in her little mouth. I have some Funkos, I obviously have Moody, Bellatrix on top of her, Bellatrix candle, I have a Butterbeer candle, Pumpkin Juice candle, um, I have Voldemort and Snape, I am a Slytherin, so I have all my Slytherin merch, my Slytherin bookmark back there, as well as my Slytherin uh, Philosopher's Stone edition. I have a Dementor Funko right here, and then obviously some tiny little Harry Potter, uh, what are they called, bookmarks back there. They're like little magnets. So this is my Harry Potter shelf. I want to make this more aesthetically pleasing, but I'm waiting until I buy the super colorful UK edition versions of Harry Potter. So really all of it is kind of just thrown on one shelf for the time being, but I do absolutely love this shelf. Now this is another one of those random shelves, but I do obviously have Lumiere and Cogsworth here, as well as my Unfortunate Orphans candle, which is funny because I don't even own a series of Unfortunate Events, so I'm trying to find a good copy of all of them. I have read all of them, but I just don't own them. And these are all my Tad Williams Otherland books. I love these. And the reason why there's Lumiere and Cogsworth on here is because this is kind of my retelling shelf, so I do have obviously all the Marissa Meyer books for the Cinder Chronicles, Cinder, what the fuck are they called? Lunar Chronicles. For the Lunar Chronicles here, I have Heartless, and then I have um, Seeing Red in the Looking Glass Wars by Bedar, which I'm really excited to read because I like Alice in Wonderland retellings because I've never actually read the Alice in Wonderland books, so that is that shelf. Like I said, it's pretty random, but I still really, really like it. I think that Lumiere and Cogsworth are really, really what tie it all together. And then obviously I have a kitty cat uh, bookend, which I don't need because all these books could literally stand up by themselves. And then once again, this is the bottom shelf for this one. This is pretty much where books go to die, although a lot of these books down here I either want to read, have read, or absolutely love. I just haven't read them. This is a candle I got in Fairy Loot. It is called Witch Soul. I love this candle. I don't often burn candles from Fairy Loots uh, because they're so tiny, but I have burned this one because it smells like lemon, verbena, vanilla, and pear, and I loved it. Um, I have The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. I have a couple of Rainbow Rowell books. You guys will know this is the only one by her that I've ever enjoyed. It's called Kindred Spirits. I have Fangirl. Uh, my three measly uh, John Green books. I love The Fault in Our Stars. I fucking love Looking for Alaska, although if I read it now, I don't know if I would. I have my exclusive edition of The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue that I got in Alcrate. I, I can't keep them together anymore. I don't know what I got. Um, this is Alice I Have Been by Melanie Benjamin, which is probably one of my most favorite underrated books. This book was really, really good. However, it is a very mature book. It has a lot of... Uh, it it kind of has a little bit of pedophilia in it to an extent, and a lot of people were turned off by that, but honestly, it was still just a really good book. Anyway, I have Roar by Cora Carmack, which you will know that that book kind of annoyed me, but I it was okay. And then I have my Miss Peregrine's books here, as well as Tales of the Peculiar, which I still need to read. I have my Victoria Aveyard books here, which if you want these, please tell me. I don't want them. I don't like them. I need to read King's Cage and Cruel Crown, and then you can just have them, because I will never read them again, and Mary Barrow drives me absolutely insane. I have my Renee Audier books here. And then I randomly picked up this book, which is called Love Letters to the Dead. I know nothing about it, and that's kind of cool because I still thought it sounded really great. And then here is my Kindle, which is dead because I never use it, because I hate, hate, hate using uh, e-readers. But I need to get the stickers off of this somehow because that's pretty much why I keep this, because I need to reorder these stickers. The Draco Malfoy deserve better one I love, um, and obviously my Fire Breathing Bitch Queen. But yeah, so that is this shelf with just random shit on it. So now we are moving on to the other shelves. Like I said before, this is going to be a little bit random because on top of reading, I'm a fan of anime, manga, things like that. You won't see a whole lot of manga on my shelves just because my husband has collected most of it, so I just read his. But up here, obviously to the left, I don't know why that's there. To the left, I have some Nightmare Before Christmas, like little stuffed animals as well as my Pokemon stuff. You guys will have seen this in the back of some of my older videos. And then I have 
my Jack Skellington as well. My husband got me that for Christmas. I don't know why his arm is missing. I have three cats and they're kind of assholes sometimes. Um, I have some art back there which I won't really go into too much but that's a Harry Potter quote that is from The Fault in Our Stars and this says eat sleep blog repeat because that is what I do. Um, I have Urza from Fairy Tale, Happy from Fairy Tale, Lucy from Fairy Tale, as well as Natsu from Fairy Tale. Um, those are just like figures that I have. I love Fairy Tale so much. I have a candle holder here, which holds my Bath and Body Works candles, which I don't currently have because Bath and Body Works is not cruelty free. So I'm trying to find a cruelty free brand that will fit in that little candle thing. So yeah, that is the top of my other set of bookshelves. Now moving on to this shelf, we are getting into the first bit that I have for Stephen King. Um, I do have quite the collection of Stephen King, so brace yourselves for all of that. This is obviously the Companion Cube from Portal. Uh, this is a like Joker, Batman thing that they did. Um, then obviously my little Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. I, once again, love Nightmare Before Christmas. I have a Nightmare Before Christmas tattoo. This from here on is obviously the Dark Tower. It drives me fucking insane that they do not match. I don't want the hardcover versions of these. I do, I'm trying to find big floppy paperback versions like the Wolves of the Kala. Um, if you are familiar with my channel at all, you will know that I fucking love that series. Um, an underrated book by Stephen King that I think everybody should read would be Doom a Key. It is never spoken about, but it is absolutely wonderful. This is a recent purchase, uh, Wendy's Button Box. And then behind here I have the Green Mile, a couple of Peter Straub's things that he did, and then my favorite book on this shelf that I own would be Rage. This is, this always really confuses people. Richard Bachman and Stephen King are the same person. It was his pen name originally that he did change, uh, but if you ever see me talk about a Richard Bachman book on my channel and you're super confused, don't be confused, it's the same person. Um, so you'll see a couple of Richard Bachman books in here as well. And then I have horror movies. It is a rainy day activity book and it just has a bunch of horror movie stuff in it and I'm obsessed. So I just keep that here. I have not done anything with that because I don't want to ruin it, honestly. But that is the first Stephen King shelf. And then moving on down, obviously we have another shelf for Stephen King. I have an alien Funko here as well as another alien Funko. Well, this is a Funko. I don't know what that is, but I love Alien. Alien is my favorite movie franchise. I am super into horror. I guess I'm just like a weird goth kid at heart, um, although I don't really try to hide that by any means. I have a bunch of books on this shelf that I adore. You will notice that most of them are either big floppy paperbacks or hardcover. I do try to stay away from um, more fragile versions of Stephen King books because I am so rough with them. I do bring them everywhere. You can see that I have cracked the spine on 11.22.69. But these two books they made into shows, they're actually pretty good. Under the Dome is really creepy, 11.22.69 I actually really enjoyed and I'm surprised by that. These two books right here, Full Moon, No Stars, and Bizarre of Bad Dreams are my couple of my favorite short story compilations that he did. I love short story compilations. Um, and then I have Revival, which was really really good as well. The story on that one was a little bit different. I have not read Dolores Claiborne and I have not read Black. This is another Peter Straub collaboration that he did. I have not actually read any of his collabs. I have read The Regulators. That book is just fucking weird. Obviously we have The Shining, the Mr. Mercedes trilogy, which I absolutely love. Hearts in Atlantis, which they made into a movie, as well as Bag of Bones, which they also made into a movie. I do really, really love these. I would say Bag of Bones is probably one of my most favorite Stephen King books of all time. But yeah, that is my second Stephen King shelf. And I'm super proud of these shelves because I have literally been collecting Stephen King since I was small. So Shout out to my husband for helping me collect and finish my collection because every time we see a new Stephen King book that I don't own, he goes ahead and picks it up or I pick it up or I don't know. I just really, really love Stephen King, okay? Oh, you thought we were done? Not a chance. <laughs> um, this is Different Seasons. This is my most favorite Stephen King book of all time. I've had multiple copies of that book. I have torn that book apart. Um, if you've seen any of my recent videos, you will know that I read it pretty much till the cover fell off, so I bought a hard copy version but didn't buy a nice hard copy version because I knew I was gonna ruin that as well. Just After Sunset is a compilation of short stories that I really really love. Storm of the Century I'm not a huge fan of. Um, I did love Insomnia. Um, I haven't read The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. My most favorite possession on this shelf is my version of The Stand. This book has like 1200 pages in it but it also has a bunch of different drawings. Um, this is the 
uh, complete uncut and illustrated version of the stand and I'm super excited to dive into that because I just need more. Dreamcatcher, one of my favorite Stephen King movies, one of the only ones that I've ever really loved. Rose Matter, the only book by Stephen King that I actually DNF would be Lizzie's story. I might try to reread that but I haven't decided. You obviously have the Tommy Knockers, which I really loved, Pet Cemetery, as well as Cell. Cell is a different kind of horror book, um, but it's still very, very good. All right, we are finally at the end of my Stephen King. I obviously have Salem's Lot. Um, I have Needful Things, which I've spoken about before. I have Doctor Sleep, which is actually a continuation of The Shining. I don't know why I don't have that up there. I have Joe Hill's books right here. I have Horns and Heart Shape Box. This is Stephen King's son. Um, he also has Owen King is an author as well, and he did a collaboration with him, and those are both of his children. So this is Joe's books. I don't own any of Owen's yet. I have The Long Walk and Firestarter, um, which are in these really cool, like, paperbacks. Oh, look how beautiful he is. I don't know. I got, I got a thing for Stephen King, okay. But I love that these match. I should probably put them with their matches. The Dark Half is a really, really great book. Also an underrated Stephen King book. It's about a man who's writing about a character, decides that he doesn't want to continue writing about that character, and then the character comes to life and tries to kill him. From a Buick 8, which is a creepy as hell book. And then moving on over here, we have my history stuff. I am a history buff. I love history. Um, when trying to decide what I wanted to do in school, I was considering doing history, but I didn't, I don't know why all the light we cannot see is over here, I probably need to find a place for that, but I'm remembering Pearl Harbor, um, Soldaten, which is a very, very hard book to read on fighting, killing, and dying, The Secret, World War II transcripts of German POWs, obviously that's a book for another time, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, which is the his history of Nazi Germany, I've spoken about that before, I found this at a bookstore. Where was I? I think in North Carolina when we lived there. No one say victory, um, perspectives on World War II. Like I said, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I don't know why that's here. And then Jack Dawes by Ken Follett, which is my most favorite, um, like, history, like, historical fiction kind of book. It's more just, like, war book. It's got a little bit of romance in it, but I still really, really enjoyed that. So that is the end of my Stephen King, as well as all of the history books that I have. All right, y'all, now moving on down. Sorry that the screen's getting kind of dark. The there's no windows by this shelf. I have Caraval by Stephanie Garber, which you've heard me talk about before. I have a Master Caraval candle. I have The Bone Season, which a friend sent to me, which she didn't like it. I'm hoping that I like it. I have The Berry Giant by Kazuo Ishiguro, I think is how you say it. Um, I've been reading a lot of Frederick Bachman really, recently, and I really enjoyed, um, I can't remember the name of the one that I read, but I did pick up A Man Called Ove because I've heard good things about that. I'm really excited to read this book by Nina LaCour. This is We Are Okay, and I think the cover is so aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah. And then I have Daughter of the Pirate King, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. I got this in an Alcrate, I believe, and I just ate it up in like 12 hours, so I'm waiting for the second one to come out. And then obviously I have my copy of Strange the Dreamer, as well as a Weep Candle. I love that they match. I think that's really pretty. And then over here I have the beginnings of my Michael Crichton. Um, they do continue on this shelf right here, so you'll see those later. But these are just a couple of the paperbacks that I have. I have Timeline, The Andromeda Strain, Congo, and Disclosure. I love Michael Crichton. You guys have heard he's kind of one of my guilty pleasures. So yeah, that is the bottom shelf on my third bookshelf. Oh, I believe I'm starting to get a little bit tired. They weren't kidding. These literally take the wind out of you. So on this shelf, I have my comic books as well as some of the manga that I own. I have a little Totoro, a custom Titan Funko that a friend made for me. I have another little Gudetama like keychain here. I obviously have Sailor Moon. I have Howl's Castle from Howl's Moving Castle, well, technically Sophie's Castle. I have Howl, Calcifer, and Sophie as well as the dog whose name I can never remember. I have two little figures from Princess Mononoke. I have a Victor Nikivarov candle from Yuri on Ice because I'm Yuri trash. I'm not gonna lie. I have a little Gudetama Cafe bag, which I have to keep the things in because if not, my cats will eat them. Um, up here, I obviously have my comic books. It's not a very extensive collection by any means. My husband owns hundreds of comic books and I just have never really gotten into them because they're kind of daunting. So my collection are newer comics that I can start collecting because he owns most of the Marvel comics, most of the Star Wars comics, and I don't really know where to begin with them. So I only really collect newer comics. And then I have obviously Totoro and No Face right there. And I love this shelf. Um, it just makes me really happy. And then I have my favorite book on this entire shelf is This, Book's Lo this Book Loves You by PewDiePie. I love PewDiePie. I know he's been a fucking idiot recently and it really upsets me, but I've been a longtime fan of his and I don't know, I'm just, 
I'm kind of torn about what to do about that whole situation. And then I have Snow White, the graphic novel by Matt Phelan, Sword Art Online, which is my favorite, uh, well, my second favorite anime of all time, Tokyo Ghoul number one, and then Dimension W number one, which is my favorite anime of all time. I fucking love Dimension W. It's like futuristic while also creepy. So that is that shelf. My anime anime yeah my anime manga comic book shelf it's really all over the place and then moving on down we have some classics and my Patrick Rothfuss collection I actually stole these from my husband these were his original versions I want to find these I know I won't be able to find slow regard of silent things in a big floppy paperback version but I am trying to find uh, name of the wind in a floppy paperback I have a waste in candle from in the wick of time which smells fucking delicious and I love it and then behind those three books, I have a Chronicles of Narnia quote. Um, it says, some journeys take us far from home, some adventures lead us to our own destiny. I really love that. My favorite quote by Stephen King, um, it says, you can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will. That quote actually is really important to me because it is what got me into booktube. It is what got me into bookstagram. Um, if you guys are familiar, I have a lot of anxiety. And just reading that quote really helped me through everything. So. And then over here I have my Flame Tree editions of H.G. Wells, Lovecraft, Crime and Mystery, Dystopia, Utopia, and Sword and Steam short stories, as well as my sword tea strainer that I got from Fairy Loot. And these are not actually leather bound because, like I've said before, I am cruelty free. Um, so yeah, that is my faux leather bound edition books that I, I think are absolutely beautiful. They look great on my shelf. Now moving on down to this shelf, this shelf is really a whole lot of who knows what. Um, it's mostly poetry. I have The Princess Saves Herself in this one, I have Milk and Honey which I have yet to read, and then my Edgar Allan Poe book. I'm trying to find a prettier version of that, although I'll probably just keep that one because it's nostalgic. I have my fairy lights in here, I keep those for when I photograph for bookstagram. I have a lot of poetry books that my mom got me a poetry book subscription when I was in high school, yeah, because I started getting them in 2006 and I stopped getting them in 2009, so from the time of 16 to 19, um, she got me a three year subscription to those because if you guys are familiar, I do write poetry, I will probably never share any of it because it's fucking terrible. Um, I have The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and other stories by Tim Burton back there. I actually have that out because a friend of mine is creating a couple of custom candles for me from that series and I'm super pumped. I have a selenite. Uh, stone here, crystal. I won't go into that. I never go into that. And then I have all of my bookmarks here, and those are kept in my Mind Palace mug that I got from Fairy Loot. But yeah, that is that shelf. Like I said, it's very, very random. There's not a whole lot to it, but I don't know. I still love it anyway because it's it's semi aesthetically pleasing to me because it's mostly like white tones with a little bit of black. But I just really like it. So here's where things get a little weird. <laughs> um, this is where I keep my Robin Hobb books. I love Robin Hobb. Um, this is the Rainwild Chronicles. This is the Assassin's Quest Chronicles, I think. These are the Live Ship Traders and the Mad Ship Trader series as well. I have another one of those birds. This one I was successful in breaking, so it's got like kind of like a busted tail. And then obviously I have another crystal here. Um, once again, I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, but yeah, and then I also have, <laughs> for no good reason other than I wanted them near me, I have all of my Pokemon plushies, so yeah, Mole Buffett is my favorite. I love Mole Buffett. This one used to be in the back of my car, so that's why it's kind of faded a little bit. I really, really love Pokemon. It is my childhood, and I can't get enough of it. So yeah, and then I also have the Totoro Pikachu thing that my friend got me for Christmas one year, and it's probably my most prized possession. I fucking love it. I've never seen anything like it, and I just for some reason thought that all of this would look really good with my Robin Hood books. <laughs> and once again, another random bit. So starting on the left, we have the rest of my Michael Crichton books. I have Jurassic Park and the Lost World. I have The Andromeda Strain, Terminal Man, and The Great Train Robbery in one book here. I have Prey, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Next, um, this is Pirate Latitudes, and this is Travels. I really liked Travels. And then I also have Five Patients, which I've spoken about before. This is more like a true-to-life uh, book. And then over here, I have random Doctor Who stuff. And then this is my Bell, and I think I think I read somewhere that it was 10, doc, like Doctor number 10, but you can't really tell because it's literally just a hand, but the coat is brown, so maybe that is who it is. And then back here, obviously, I have the David Tennant 
um, collection. This is like a special edition 26 discs. It's got like every single episode and a bunch of other random stuff and like a book in it and I don't know, I just really like it. And then my most prized possession on this shelf, I have The Essential Guide to Doctor Who. This, sells, this says 12th Doctor Edition and I think that's just because it also includes Matt Smith in it as well, but it does start from the very, very beginning of the series and talks about pretty much everything. So yeah, this shelf is pretty random. It's just Doctor Who and Michael Crichton. I'm hoping to get a separate bookshelf for some of these things to kind of just like actually have books on here and not just random stuff, but yeah, that's that shelf. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, sorry, I had to put my hair up. Filming these are really, really hard. People weren't joking. I, it's, it makes you run out of breath. Like, I didn't realize how many books I actually owned until I had to show you and talk about all of them. Um, but yeah, that is everything that I own. Those are all my books. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!